One morning, I, William Saijo, was sitting at my desk and staring blankly at nothing as usual, when my classmates started buzzing with excitement. Hey, she's coming! <sighs> she's so beautiful today, too! This was an everyday occurrence. I let out a small sigh. When the doors opened, a slender and tall, beautiful young girl with the shape of a model walked in. Makoto Minazuki. She had a reputation for being the most beautiful girl in school. And on top of that, I hear her grades are also really high, which surprised me. According to rumors, there's apparently even a fan club for her within the school. I'm sure it must be a hard thing to do, but I think it's genuinely amazing to be able to root for someone that passionately. However, this Minazuki always maintains an indifference to these voices around her. She doesn't throw her affection around, and it doesn't seem like she has any friends that she could call close. She seems to keep conversations with people to the bare minimum of as necessary. And with her sharp eyes, she gives off a cool impression. Miss Makoto, good morning. Morning. Um, uh, the weather's great today. Sure is. Once again today, the classmates that must be her fans look nervous as they talk to her. But Minazuki briefly looks up with her cold eyes and answers in short words. You can tell that Minazuki has no intention of expanding the conversation beyond that. Even still, the boys... Hey, Ms. Makoto, say good morning to me. We even had a conversation. They said they were getting excited between their other guy friends. Uh, only because you said good morning to her, and I don't think that counts as a conversation. That's what I thought, but I wasn't friends with those guys, so I don't talk to them either. Minazuki didn't pay any mind to the guys, and she was turning the pages of her textbook. When it comes to solitude, I don't think I would lose to Minazuki. So it's not exactly that I'm a fan, but I did feel a kind of closeness with Minazuki. And if possible, I wanted her to keep her solitude from now on, too. Well, I'm sure she and I won't have anything else in common from now on, either. Ugh, I'm hungry. The day after school, I was heading towards the neighborhood supermarket to buy groceries for dinner. In my house, my mom was on a long-term work assignment out of state. And my dad was never home, so I was practically living alone. In other words, I had a dream situation for any high school boy. That being said, it was a pain that I would have to make dinner for myself. As the sun was setting and I was walking on the street, I bumped into somebody who was practically running. When I felt the delicate body bump into me, I stopped without thinking. Whoa! Uh, I'm sorry. When I looked, the person that bumped into me was the most beautiful girl in school, Minazuki. Unlike me, who was in my casual clothes, she was still in her school uniform. Oh, it's you, Minazuki. What's the matter? Oh, Saito. You're looking pretty pale. Are you not feeling well? Uh, um, it's nothing. So please don't pay any mind to it. Even though she said that, it stuck with me that Minazuki was acting strange. When I looked around us, I found a suspicious figure hiding behind a telephone pole behind Minazuki. I see, so that's what's going on. What? In an instant, I thought about a way to seek out of this place. It would be a power move, but in this situation, I had no other choice. I opened up the wallet that I had, took out the coin purse, and dispersed coins everywhere. Clang, clang! They made a pathetic sound as the coins hit the ground. Whoa well, there, it looks like I've dropped my coins! Uh, uh, Saicho? What on earth? My bad, Minazuki. As my friendly classmate, can you help me pick up the coins? I don't mind that, but... And so, Minazuki and I crouched down, and we started picking up the coins that were scattered around the ground. I confirmed that the person behind the telephone pole hadn't moved, so I slowly got closer. I'm pretty sure they rolled over here, too. Oh, excuse me. Did you see any coins come over here? Uh... When I spoke to the person hiding behind the telephone pole, he panicked and he clumsily ran away. I knew it. Without picking anything else up, I went back to the original place. And Minazuki, I was looking at me with a confused look on her face. Oh, you picked them all up. Thank you. Um... Looks like that guy over there, he was following you. When I said that, Minazuki quickly looked away. How did you know? Well, due to some family circumstances, I guess I'm more or less sharp about those things. Um, what does that mean? More importantly, we need to talk about the problem that you've been roped into. When I said that, Minazuki's body started to shiver. It seemed that this was pretty serious. 
but I didn't know how much of her expression I could read into. When she's just a classmate I'm not even friends with. From what I've seen, I wouldn't feel great about it if I pretended like I didn't see this. But if you don't want to, then I won't force you to tell me. No, I wouldn't feel good about that either. From there, Minazuki looked like she made up her mind. She started talking. To tell you the truth, recently I've been followed by a stalker. Just now, I was studying in the library at school. And on my way home, I realized that I was being followed. I see, and you didn't know what to do, so you purposefully bumped into me. Yes. And then I listened to Minazuki as she told me about her situation. Apparently, the stalker started following her about one month ago from today. It would happen once every few days, and he would be waiting for Minazuki outside of the school. She knew that there was a fan club from before that passionately conducted their activities, but she said that this is the first time she's ever had a direct stalker. He was particularly persistent today, and even though she wanted to go home, she was scared of him figuring out where she lives. So she had been walking around town this whole time. Thank you so much for what you did earlier, Saijo. She said that when Azuki got up and bowed her head down to me. There's nothing to think before. I just so happened to run into you, that's all. Even still, you really saved me. I at least had a grasp on the situation. For the rest, it would be best to leave it in the hands of somebody that Minazuki could trust. The stalker from earlier must have realized that you saw him, so he'll probably lay low for a while. Do you think so? Well, that's good. All that's left is to have your parents drive you back in their car. Can you get in touch with them? No, I can't. I was brought into the family born by my mom, but I don't get along with my stepdad or his kids. So now I moved out and I live by myself. So that's why I can't really go to my parents. It turned out that Minazuki had a complicated situation as well. Well, that's... Uh, I shouldn't have said that, sorry. Please, don't apologize. I also never talked about it, so... Well then, uh, what about friends that you can trust in times like this? Even if you can't get into a car, if somebody can walk you home, then you would feel better, right? If you're in the same class as me, Saijo, then I believe I have a pretty good idea about what my relationship with people are like. Uh, my bad. That's right. Minazuki was a loner just like me. I mean, choose a solitude. A painful silence continued for a while, but then Minazuki abruptly put her face close to mine. Um, is there no possibility for you to walk me back to my place? Me? Uh, I'm a guy, so I don't think that's best. If it's you, Saijo, then I could trust you. And you saved me as well, so... But what if I helped you because I had ulterior motives? If that were the case, then wouldn't you suggest walking me home first before telling me to call my parents or friends? Well, that's true. And plus, you haven't even tried to ask me for my phone number. You don't seem like a person with ulterior motives to me. When she puts it like that, there was nothing I could say back to that. Is that a no? I'd, I'd gotten carried away, but I was reminded that Minazuki was the most beautiful girl in the school. If she was going to ask me with that face, there is no way that I should be able to say no to that. Fine, just to your door. <laughs> Thank you very much. As she said that, Minazuki had a warm smile spread across her face. Minazuki's house was about a 20-minute walk from there, and it was an apartment with a security lock. Unexpectedly, it turned out that Minazuki and I lived in the same neighborhood. That is it. Thank you very much, Saijo. Oh, well, I'm just glad you got here safely. Well then, William Saijo, before we part ways, would you like to exchange phone numbers? Why? After today's incident, I thought it would be best to at least have one acquaintance for my classmates. Wait a minute, do you have uh, ulterior motives with me? Come on, please stop joking around. We exchanged phone numbers and Minazuki finally disappeared into her apartment building. I looked around to make sure there wasn't anybody that could be a stalker around and I let out a deep sigh. Uh, I'm kind of tired now. And with this, my weird connection with Minazuki is over. All I can do now is to pray that Minazuki isn't a victim again. Well, at that time, that was what my genuine thoughts were. After that, Minazuki started sending me messages pretty frequently. In the beginning, they were mostly to express her gratitude to me, but as time went on, we started talking about pointless things in our daily lives. Even from my side, I told her how my parents were never home, and I was basically living alone, and that my dad was a detective. Well, that he worked for a specific type of detective agency. I told her all of that, too. 
So your dad is a detective. That's amazing. I've only ever seen them in novels and in the movies. But he's not one of the cool ones like you see in these mystery novels or anything like that. He just investigates things like affairs or partners who go missing. He said it's mostly stuff like that. I see. So that's why on that day, you were so quick to notice a stalker. Well, when my dad is days off, he tells me about these things. And sometimes I go visit him at the agency, too. We don't interact when we're at school, but after school, we started messaging each other. And little by little, I was starting to understand more about Minazuki. How she knows that she's looked at as special from those around her, but that she really still hasn't gotten used to it. How she gives off the impression that she's hard to read, but that's simply because she's not good at talking to people. How she does actually feel lonely. The more I talked to her, the more I realized she was just a normal girl. Whoa, it's already this late? You're right. We should go to sleep. Well then, Saijo, good night. Yeah, good night. She may be the most beautiful girl in school, and she may be by herself all the time, but maybe I was the one that was putting up the walls around her. About one week after the stalker incident happened, one day... Saijo! Minazuki? What's that matter all of a sudden? It was extremely rare for Minazuki to talk to me within school grounds. Uh, actually, there is a letter from my stalker in my locker. Uh, when I heard those words without thinking, I gripped my teeth. As expected, the stalker wasn't going to back down just yet. When I looked in Minazuki's locker, inside there was a letter and a bouquet of flowers. It's this. Let me open the letter. If you don't want to, you don't have to look. No, I can't keep running away either, so... Plus, you're here with me now. Sure. Well, don't push yourself too much. When I opened the letter, and sorry, there was a photograph of Minazuki about to walk into her apartment building. This is... my door. Honestly, this is not looking good. As it turns out, the stalker had finally been able to locate Minazuki's home. Tomorrow is the start of a three-day weekend, but there was plenty of possibility that he might try to do something within that time. So far, he hadn't showed signs of applying any direct danger to her, but this had already put enough of a strain on Minazuki mentally. I think at this rate, it's better if we go to the police. But with only this evidence, will they be able to do anything? As I was thinking hard about it, Minazuki's thin hands grabbed onto my arm. I, I am really scared. I can only imagine. If only there was something I could... Um, I'm sure this is a ridiculous request, but for the three-day weekend starting tomorrow, would it be possible for me to stay at your place? Well, that sure is a ridiculous request. That's exactly what I just said. But there's nobody else I can trust except for you, Saijo. But uh, my parents aren't at my house. I don't mind, even if your parents aren't there. As long as you're there, I can be a lot more comfortable than my house where I live alone. That's not what I meant, though. That being said, I couldn't just leave Minazuki in this situation either. And so I decided. All right, let me ask my parents. And as long as they're okay with it. Thank you very much, truly. I'm just so worried, and... I'm already on the boat. It wouldn't be right to leave you now. When I called my dad, he quickly responded that if I wanted to let a friend stay over, they could stay over as much as they want. And so, I was going to be living together with Minazuki for a while. Right now, my mom's room is empty, so while she was at my place, she would be sleeping there. You can use this room, however you like. Thank you so much for everything. If there is anything else you might need, let me know. Should be no problem. I made sure to pack everything properly. Before coming back to my place, first she went to Minazuki's apartment together, and I had her gather whatever she needed to stay over. Of course, I didn't go into her bedroom, and I waited for her out in the living room. Despite the circumstances, I couldn't help but to think that Minazuki seemed excited. Hey, is it just me, or does it seem like you're happy about this? Well, that's, um... That might be because this is the first time I've ever slept at a classmate's house. Oh, really? Now that you mention it, I don't think anybody has ever stayed over here either. <laughs> I guess that means it's the first time for both of us. Sure. For some reason, given the situation, I heard that in a different context and my heart skipped a beat. No, no, calm down. There's no way that Minazuki would say a joke with a deeper meaning like that. And so, despite the nerves and the awkwardness, Minazuki and I began our time as roommates. Hmm, this is delicious. This ginger pork. I'm glad you don't mind it. 
Sorry I can't make anything that great. That's not true at all. This is really delicious. <laughs> What's the matter? Did something funny happen or something? Well, that's, um... Is it my face? When I made that joke, Minazuki made a panicked face. She's actually pretty fun to tease. Not at all. I was just thinking that it's fun to have a meal with somebody. I see. Well, I feel the same way. Recently, I hadn't been eating with my family either. So it had been a while since I had an opportunity like this. Being roommates with Minazuki was generally going fine, but sometimes I would run into trouble. The morning of the day when I went to the bathroom and washed my face, Minazuki was brushing her teeth in a thin set of pajamas. Whoa! Oh, good morning, Saijo. Uh, good morning. Minazuki's pajamas were open very wide along her chest, and if I wasn't careful, I felt like I might be able to see down that way. As it turns out, when she goes to sleep, Minazuki was the type to let her guard down. Perhaps she was still half asleep because she didn't seem to notice that her clothing was in a dangerous place. What's the matter? Why are you looking away? Well, it's just that I didn't think that it would be good for me to stir either, so... Huh? Perhaps she realized her state when I said that, because Minazuki suddenly jumped and covered herself. Uh, I'm so sorry. Um, when I live alone, I've never thought about things like this, and... You don't need to apologize, but also, I'm also sorry. If anything, I wanted to thank her. But that certainly would have been a crime, so I restrained myself. The next afternoon, I was about to go out to get groceries when Minazuki stopped me. Saito, where are you going? Just to do some groceries. I don't have anything to make dinner, so... Uh, I'll come with you. Minazuki? It's a little hard to walk on this. I have no choice. I don't want the stalker to see me somewhere. In that case, you should have waited at home. I don't want that either. Why not? For me to have the most beautiful girl in school pressed up against me on my arm was so strange, I didn't know what to do. Saito, from now on, please don't leave the house without saying anything to me. Well, I just felt bad bothering you. That's not okay! From now on, please promise you'll say something to me! Huh, well, as long as I don't forget then. Hmm, fine. I felt like there was a cute baby voice coming from Minazuki that I had never heard before. Or was I just imagining that? And just like that, it was the last night of the three-day weekend. Minazuki knocked on my door and came into my room. Sorry to bother you this late at night. Minazuki, what's the matter? Um, I couldn't really sleep. Oh, would it be okay if we talked? I don't mind. But you can't fall asleep while I'm talking, okay? Yeah, yeah. And so we have mindless this conversation from there. I try to keep the topics light so that Minazuka wouldn't think about the stalker. <sighs> Eventually, Minazuka fell asleep. I slowly moved my shoulder and I carried Minazuka into her bedroom. Good night, Makoto. First, I was relieved that Minazuka was able to get to sleep, but the fact that she came into my bedroom the night before we were able to go back to school could only mean that she was feeling uneasy about it. I had to do something about this. And for that, I had already made some moves. But I didn't know how they would work out. But then I had left my phone on silent, and it started to vibrate. I rushed out of the bedroom and checked my phone. It was a call from my dad, so I quietly answered. Hello, dad? Oh, hey, Wataru. There's been some updates on that thing you asked me to look into. Thank you. The next morning, I was standing behind the schoolyard, waiting for the person that I called out. Are you the person that asked to see me? Hello, I apologize for the sudden invitation. The person that appeared there was a girl that I recognized from walking past in the hallway a number of times. Miss Akane Satari from Junior Class A, is that right? Yeah, that's right, but I have no idea why I've been called out by you right now. No matter how you looked at her, she seems like a normal, cute high school girl. But there was something that I was about to have to tell her. I'm gonna get straight to the point. From this moment on, stop following Makoto Minazuki around anymore. The moment I spoke Minazuki's name, Akane's face tightened up. It looked like she knew what I was talking about. Uh huh? Uh, I have no idea what you're talking about right now. And it looked like she was gonna try and act like she didn't. Well then, I have no choice. Take a look at this. From my back pocket, I pulled out a number of photographs. In the first photograph, there was Minazuki stuck right on my arm, 
and right behind her was Sawatari. She was in a disguise, but that brown hair and overall appearance looked like her. In a separate photograph, there she was, after she had removed her disguise. I predicted that the stalker would only continue to follow Minazuki around. That's why when I asked my dad who works at a detective agency whether Minazuki could stay over, at the same time, I asked if it might be possible for him to take photos as evidence for me. I didn't expect it to be a girl and that was a shock. But because there are both guy and girl members in her fan club, it wasn't strange for the stalker to be a girl either. Even after seeing these, can you still stay the same? Uh, well, that's... After being presented with photo evidence, she must have realized that she couldn't make any excuse anymore. And Sadawari fell down to her knees on the spot. Uh, I am very sorry. Why did you do something like this? Well, that's because Miss Makoto was just so beautiful and somebody that I respected and I really wanted to know her more. Why did you send her a photograph that would scare her like that? That's, well, I don't know the answer to all that either. But I think it's probably because I wanted her to know that I existed too. I did not understand the feeling of wanting the other person to recognize you, but to inflict fear for that reason wasn't right. Listen closely, you better not follow Minazuki ever again. If you break this promise, you know what's going to happen, right? Uh, I am very sorry. I had already shared the gist of the situation with the school as well, and I'm sure Sawatari shouldn't be able to stalk anybody anymore. And so, with that, this case of the stalker was closed. That day on the way home, I told Minazuki that everything was over and that she could relax now. So, that's what happened. Yeah, so you don't need to worry anymore. Thank you very much, Saijo. Although her words were positive, for some reason, Minazuki's expression was dark. What is wrong? Is there something else that's on your mind? No, not exactly. That's not what this is, but since it was solved, does that mean I should be going back to my house now? Well, I guess so because you don't have the worry of the stalker anymore. Is that so? I, I guess that means that there's no reason for me to be together with you anymore, too. Well, I don't think we will be together in the same way that we have been anymore. Oh, but as classmates, we're still going to be friends, right? Oh yeah, of course, that's the plan. Anyway, let's go home. She said that and Minazuki was walking ahead of me. As I was watching her back, the memories flooded in. The memories of these days that I spent together with her. Minazuki was put on a pedestal as the most beautiful girl in school. And even though she looked like a loner, she was just a normal girl. She said that my cooking was delicious and looked so happy when she was eating. It was always days when she woke up and she would easily get sad and lonely. Minazuki! What? Without thinking, I had reached out and grabbed Makoto's hand. That's because somewhere deep inside of me, I knew that I would regret it if I didn't say it now. I looked her in the eyes, into those eyes, not of the most beautiful girl in the school or as a fellow loner or anything like that, but the eyes of a girl that meant a lot to me. Makoto? Yes? I have to tell you that I, uh, 